Uh, hey YouTube, this is Pervious1030, Tin King Gardener. And no, I am not about to perform surgery or change a diaper. But I'm doing something far more dangerous. Today, I'm going to be extracting seeds from these ripe, dry jalapenos. Um, before we get to that, I always wear gloves because I cannot tell you how many times I've been doing this and forgot to wash my hands, rub my eyes, or worse, if you're a guy or girl and you use the bathroom, and yeah, it's bad, so, very bad, don't do it, wash your hands, wear gloves, this is the best way. So I wanted to show you guys something. I harvested all these bad boys just the other day off of my jalapeno tree, you might as well be. Today, I harvested two of these uh, Black Beauty eggplants. Um, the reason why I harvested them so small, they can get a lot bigger, but I feel that the flavor is more abundant in them. The smaller they are, the more rich, richer the taste is. So, carrying on, as I were. Let's see here. Um, well, I guess I'm gonna just have to use this for now. Those. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take these and I'm going to break them in half. I think I'm going to just drop them right in here. Yeah, I usually have a method for doing this, but it is what it is. So I figured I'd talk to you guys about some gardening stuff today. If you hear people coming in and out, it's just a kid. So. Whenever you're collecting seeds, you got to keep an eye out for that. See that gray green mold in there? This pepper is no good. Neither is the seed in which it is spawning. So let me get a bag. Didn't expect that. What? Sorry about that, guys. Uh, got to make sure you got everything set up before you do these videos. It's kind of a pain. All right. So, um, whenever uh, I'm collecting seeds, you know, it, it really gives me time to think um, about everything else going on in my life and just how crazy life can be sometimes. See, these seeds are pretty good um, and it really gives you just time to keep your mind off of stuff uh, whenever you do collect seeds from these peppers if you want you can continue drying out these skins and crush them up for a jalapeno powder type stuff you can put on your food it's pretty good uh, let's see how bad this one is now I'm kind of scared for the older looking ones because, yep, they mold. It happens. It happens to the best of us. Let me see, I bet you this one's molded too. No? Huh. No, well, that's a surprise. A good surprise, I guess. Get some of these seeds out of here. Um, and whenever I collect my seeds, I collect them from three different plants, like a bunch of different peppers. Seed diversity is so important. Um, it's, you know, if, if you start inbreeding from the same plant, the, the genetics can get pretty messed up. Even if, you know, some heirlooms, you can get away with it, whatever. But whenever you are picking heirlooms, you want to keep the diversity in there. It's very important. Or so I've read and been told. Everything I've read, it's pretty much been the same thing. Now the pepper seed is usually the hottest part of the pepper. And the core of it. 
I'm just throwing those away because it's kind of pointless for me to keep them. Is this one molded over? Uh, nope, not quite. So, I've been just collecting seeds lately. I got a whole bunch of uh, squash seeds. I saved they something up there. They're black beauty squash, or er, not squash, eggplant. I gotta get some other varieties grown because black beauty is the longest, most um, hot weather variety. It takes forever to grow, in other words, and like down here in South Florida, it'll just keep growing unless the pests get to it and all that mess. Um, seeds from there. Some of these are molded, so I'm going to get rid of that. But um, some pest can really tear up uh, uh, your eggplant. And one of those pests are the horned tomato ones. I've seen them on mine. Uh, and then there's this black and white beetle. I don't know the name of it right off the top of my head. I could go look it up if I wanted to, but I'm not going to do that. But it's a black, it's a white beetle with black spots and it lays a bunch of eggs underneath the leaves. And then those little buggers break out of there and they totally destroy your entire crop. So, um, white flies are bad on peppers. Too. I've been having issues with white flies on these things, but eggplants, I mean, it's like a favorite of pests. So what I did is with my eggplants, I plant things like mint, onions, peppers. you got to confuse the pests so they don't know what's going on. They uh, get confused and they just don't mess with it. Uh, it's, it's a good practice to a uh, companion plant. I tried that this year with some corn, and my corn, I did something to it. It was my error, not the plant or the seed or anything like that. It was a uh, yakka lacking, lack, I can't even say the name, but it's a giant corn from South America, I do believe. And I think it's Peru, maybe. Anyways, it's a giant corn. And this corn, see, you can't touch your face, and my face always itches whenever I mess with this stuff. Because look, I have oils all over my hand right there. Yeah, you want to get that crap in your eye. Anyways, so, I had the giant corn, and it just, it grew, it started growing beautifully. I actually got to plant more, but it, I did something to it, and I killed it, you know, that sort of thing. Um... So it's a real pain sometimes to uh, to grow things because you got to go through trial and error and that sort of thing. And as you're as you're going through these trials and errors, it can be frustrating. And you might just be like, I don't want to garden anymore. This is ridiculous. Well, sometimes you got to take a step back and grow what works for you. I mean, if you've been growing for 25 years, you can pretty much grow anything. I, I'm finding that uh, my geographical location highly dictates what I can and cannot grow. For instance, if let me take these gloves off because I'm done with some peppers today. Um, if I lived in Colorado, uh, earwigs are really bad on my corn. But other than that, everything else did pretty good. I'm trying to think of something that didn't grow good for me in Colorado. Nope, can't do it. Ohio the same way. Uh, we get a lot of uh, potato, potato beetles out there. Uh, and those, you guys have seen them. They're all over Northeast Ohio. They're everywhere. So we get some of those. Definitely get white fly and stuff there too. Um, but it's manageable down here in south florida ain't nothing manageable uh i grew um a buddy of mine and me grew some hot peppers in iraq and that was actually easier than growing peppers here because of the white flies because there really ain't no pest out there and there ain't no soil either so we had to figure all that out but that's 
a whole other story. Anyways, um, so I have been doing everything down here. I mean, I've been using oils, I've been using sprays, I've been using everything I can to try to keep these pests off. And next thing I'm going to go to is baking powder, or baking soda. Yes, baking soda, not baking powder. Um, and I'm going to try to use some of that and some vinegar. I mean, because it's like an all-out battle with these guys. Every time I go look at my plants, I have more holes. And they get these little green pickle worm. Yeah, it's really annoying because they'll bore right through the squash flower, usually the male. They'll bore right through the male. And if they do see a female flower, they go down in there and lay eggs. So, yeah, that's really lovely. Uh, then the eggs open and bore into your, your squash and zucchini and hollow it out and you gotta grab it and it mushes in your hand. I actually had that happen to me with a uh, cantaloupe last year. And it was one of my bigger ones, I was a little upset. So, as it stands right now, I have radishes growing. This is everything growing, not planted. I have radishes growing. I have uh, Lungo Bianco squash. Yeah, it's like a gray squash. I have golden zucchini. I have a Cherokee wax bean. I have Market More 76 cucumbers and my jalapenos, Afghan melon, uh, and a couple other melon types. I do believe one of those is cream cobra, which I'm going to do a full review on that one. And another one is the Chardonnay. It's a French melon. And I have one more melon in there. And for the life of me, I can't remember what it is. But i got a lot of that going on. And then i got some pole beans, which are the uh, purple potted pole beans. I'm going to try those out. I'm going to put them up on a trellis. Um, and I did some sunflowers. And... Uh, I tried growing some four clocks. I'm gonna have to plant more of those. They didn't take the way I wanted them to. So, and I also planted some uh, top double peas. Those also did not take the way I wanted them to. So, you know, that's just uh, one of the things that've been going on. So, it is what it is, guys. So, that's what I've been doing with my garden. I figured I'd make this video, let you guys know what's going on. Um, I am still trying to plant as much as possible. Um, if any of you guys uh, want seeds, leave it in the comment section down below and we'll figure out how to work that out. I do have a lot of seeds. So, um, well, until next time. Pervious 1030 with Tin Can Gardener. Behave, guys. Later.